you're most likely familiar with the term Dark Ages, used to refer to a period of Western Europe after the fall of Rome, but not after the Roman Empire, as I'm going to annoy uh, Anglo-Saxonists and early medievalists enough without also upsetting Byzantinists. But was the post-Roman world really a Dark Age? No. So what do we mean by Dark Age and, and really how do we know that, that there is no such thing? Well, the term itself is probably medieval, uh, though likely not used uh, widely during the medieval period. Uh, and by this, I mean the post-Roman period up to modernity, say, sort of 1600, 1500, something like that. Um, and it refers to a perceived deterioration in the quality of Latin and Greek by an Italian scholar named Petrarch in the 1330s, uh, early 14th century. But he was drawing on the writings of earlier church and thus Rome-centric writers and clerics, people like St Jerome and St Patrick writing in the 5th century, Gregory of Tours in the 6th, Bede, the Venerable Bede in the 8th, and these are all writing to describe a period of uncivilized darkness between the twin points of light that uh, Petrarch saw as fair Rome and of his own time. Petrarch thought that the Roman world was the pinnacle of civilization, something that had been swept away, swept aside by a horde of murderous Germanic barbarians, something that had not only destroyed the guiding light of Rome, but that had ushered in a dark age of barbarism a dark age from people which had emerged only recently in his own time. The term was then further used by scholars and artists of the so-called Renaissance and later Enlightenment and doubtless others uh, in the period after um, to refer to a period of cultural stagnation, a fracturing of empire into small feuding kingdoms, desperate places ruled and controlled by warlords and just a sort of general lack of art, science, great leaders and all that other good stuff. But there are a few issues with this view. Firstly, it entirely discounts the Roman world outside of Western and, and, and sort of Central Europe. The 7th century was a time of great learning and social advancement in the Islamic world and parts of Asia, for example. Science, maths and the general understanding of the world was significantly advanced by Islamic scholars, by men and women who built on the work of Greek and Roman scholars uh, and from those outside of Europe, and who not only built the world's first university during this dark age, but increased the knowledge and understanding of the universe, providing building blocks for the European Renaissance during it. Secondly, though great military or secular leaders were arguably broadly missing throughout the, the post or immediate post-Roman world, other than Charles the Great, also known as Charlemagne, who sponsored buildings and art and created empires and lasting legacies and all that good stuff. But he was French, so we ignore him in Britain for some reason. There was a central unifying social and political entity at work in Europe, the church and churchmen, and they were mostly, but not entirely, men, headed by the Pope in Rome. And the medieval church thought, sought to become, was the greatest and most powerful institution in Western Europe, with both soft and hard power extending beyond the Vatican, crossing borders, and with kings and emperors doing homage to the Pope in Rome, with land and wealth flowing into the church's coffer rather than to king's tax collectors and with church law being recognised alongside and sometimes above state law. Further, the investment by a senior church official and the recognition of a pope did much to legitimise the reign of a king or queen, further cementing the church as paramount. So a lack of great military or secular leaders, perhaps, but of great unifying leaders and of pan-national organisations Certainly not. Though in the post-Roman world, uh, certainly great martial and political empires no longer were the norm, if you ignore Charlemagne, but as mentioned, he was French, so in Britain we tend to do that. Though literacy rates fell and thus 
the growth of recorded as in written knowledge was limited there were two very significant ways in which the early medieval period of Europe saw huge advances so the post Roman world this supposed dark age well it advanced amazingly in agriculture and the introduction of new and better farming methods by this improved agriculture allowed more food to be produced by fewer people on less land or on land which previously was unable to be farmed using newly developed um, techniques and the newly developed heavy plough and of course in art. Not so much in great and wonderful paintings though of course they do exist but in the amazing metalwork and stonework and jewellery and wood carving and poetry and stories which echo through the ages of the Anglo-Saxon Scandinavian Frankish peoples which were enabled by the global trading networks and exchanges of ideas and goods and monies all of which remained in place in this barbarous dark age I don't know how it could be that barbarous and dark if people are still traveling and, and crossing borders and, and, and keeping the uh, the contact between different peoples and different nations and different parts of the world flowing. You can see how raw materials, so garnets from what are today Sri Lanka, from the northern parts of India, made their way all the way across land and sea to Britain in the 5th and 6th centuries to be turned not into lovely swords, although of course Anglo-Saxon smiths were making some fantastic metalwork, some amazing swords, but into jewellery. Jewellery which has, has remarkable clarity and beauty even today. So, was there a dark age? I don't think so. But what do you think?